To start the haul off, I thought you guys might like to see this really cool TV tray. Not exactly sure of the age. It definitely is giving me 1960s vibes. This, to me, almost looks like Richard Scarry. I don't know if that sounds familiar to any of you all. The only reason I know about Richard Scarry was because there's a movie that came out in the, I think it was the late 90s. It's called Barney's Great Adventure. Barney the Dinosaur, I'm sure we all know who that is. And I remember the commercials and the ads that they play before the movie starts. They had a little intro for the Richard Scarry books and the movies that you could get on VHS at the time. So that's what this reminds me of. So we've got a bunch of characters here sitting and watching a TV with a clown. And sorry, Misty, but I'm zooming in on it. There's the creepy clown. Creepy clown, creepy clown, yep. But I thought that was really cool for two bucks. I've never seen that before. So yeah, I mean, I couldn't say no to that. And there is a big old dent right here, but what's vintage without a bunch of dents and dings? Am I wrong? So in my travels and looking through all of the fun stuff that you find at Goodwill, I found this 1989, the farmer says, see and say toy. I had this as a kid and I remember it being in one of my toy boxes. And it just brought back a lot of memories from when I was little and I'm sure I probably drove my parents absolutely nuts with this thing. So this is really cool and just because it's from my childhood and it does work. Uh, if you remember about two and a half, three years ago when we moved into this house, once it was okay to start going thrifting and we got the house squared away and you know set up to the way we wanted it, I went out and I found a CNC from the 1960s in the original box. Of course, it doesn't ha probably have as much value because it doesn't work. It's been messed with a lot over the years. But I still like it because you don't see that very often. At least I've never seen it. But here's how it works. You just pull down this little lever and whatever animal this arrow is pointing at, it will tell you what noise or what the sound of the animal is. So. Here's a turkey. <laughs> So yeah, that, you get the basic concept. It's just a piece of nostalgia from my childhood, and that's why I kind of had to have it. The last larger item I'd like to share, and probably my most favorite, is this framed image of a young girl who is, it looks like she's writing down something in a journal. I really liked the look of it. I can definitely tell it had age to it because for once, the Flash is actually doing something very helpful and showing you the detail of the pressing of the paper when this was made. I mean, look at the detail in her hair. And look at the frame here. That looks like butterflies of some sort or maybe even leaves. So this has definitely got some age to it. And I believe that this kind of art on the frame is called tramp art. If I had to date just the paper piece in the frame, I would say probably late 1800s, early 1900s, just judging by the, the look of the way the girl's dressed and the style of, you know, just the color. Like, the colors on this thing are magnificent. I've never seen anything like this before. So I said, I'll jump on it. And while I'm really not into Victorian looking stuff sometimes when it's this old and it's this cheap you just gotta grab it now that we've seen all the larger stuff let's go ahead and check out the smaller stuff so the very first thing i'd like to share with you all small wise is this really cool jar it's not very big but it's in the shape of a thimble it's got a decorative floral stamp right here it's raised or like embossed or stamped into the ceramic. Can't remember exactly who made it. Let's see if it'll focus on here. I can't because it's really fuzzy. Um, the House of Webster Ceramics. In good shape, no cracks or chips to either the lid or the piece itself. 
this doesn't go for a whole lot on eBay, so be on the lookout for this at a live sale. So this is older. I'm not exactly sure how old, but I'm definitely judging by the box. It's giving me 70s, 80s vibes. It's a Melner electronic water timer, time matic Paid $2 for that, I think. Last one of these, this exact one sold for about $15. So if it's something you're interested in, the link to my eBay shop is down below. It is already listed. So if you like old school electronics to tinker with, this would be right up your alley. So this next item has kind of a funny story to it, not that it's related to what I'm about to tell you, but it's still kind of funny. Okay, so this is one of those Peter Pan records, just here. It's for Tubby the Tuba, and there's a little bit of a funny story with the word Tubby. So. If you all know, when I did my Fat Bird Finds Your Hometown Challenge, I talked about Montgomery County, Maryland, uh, the Gaithersburg, Germantown, Rockville area. And down there, it's very congested, very hard to get around. Like, some people work 15 minutes away, but they have to leave, like, a half hour ahead of time because it takes them 45 minutes to get to their jobs sometimes, depending on where you are. So, you know, driving down there is very frustrating. It's, it, it definitely makes your blood boil because people don't know how to drive down there and it's just a whole big mess. So anyway, a few years ago when we were up in Maine, we were in a parking garage for, I think it was Portsmouth, New Hampshire, because it's, it's hard to park on the streets there, so they have parking garages and things like that. So a lot of the spaces, of course, were filled because it was summertime and it's kind of touristy there. So we drive up to, I think, like the last, either second to last or the last um, row or like the second to last story of the garage. And we see a spot and there's this like really heavy set dude, like really heavy set, like you couldn't believe he was still able to walk heavy set. He was sitting in a camping chair waiting to, I guess, reserve this spot for somebody. And of course, my uncle still lives down in that area in Montgomery County. So, of course, the inner moco in him just kind of came out and he's like, we'd be able to park here if this tubby would move. And because uh, sometimes it's not what somebody says, it's how they say it. And my grandmother was notorious for this. Like, she was a trucker on the road. Like, she just didn't have any tolerance for stupid people. <laughs> so, yeah, he literally, he didn't say it to this guy's face, thank God. I would have been a little horrified had he said it to, the, to him directly. But, oh my gosh, it was so funny. Just the hatred and disgust in somebody's voice sometimes makes what they say 10 times more funny than what they actually said. So that's the little fun story with this. This I think got donated by somebody who had a space in a vendor mall and they just couldn't sell it. I contemplated on getting it because it was already a good price there but I was like eh, I could probably find something like this anywhere but this go around I decided to grab it for that specific reason. Just because I thought it was really funny and because of that significance with my uncle calling some really heavy set dude Tubby because he couldn't move. <laughs> I'm weird like that. So I found this piece of nautical decor. It was 50 cents. It's in the shape of like a hurricane bottle. And what attracted me to it was this fish that's on it. And you all know I like my fish stuff. And you got a little bit of a ocean scene. The fish is coming off of there. And of course, I pick it up and look what it says on the bottom. Avon. Yeah, an Avon bottle. Can you believe it? Of all the things for me to be attracted to in a thrift store, I'm attracted to an Avon decanter. I think this did hold bath oil at some point in time because, you know, that kind of stuff is very, like, nautical. Like, you know, a lot of beachy stuff can be for the bathroom. But I thought it was cool. If I had a lid to it, I would probably fill it up with some water and uh, do what I did with the seahorse and the mermaid and just add some food coloring to it. 
But since I don't have that, I'm not going to do do that because I don't want to accidentally spill it. And knowing me, I will do that at some point and stain my carpet. So yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. And for 50 cents, I was thinking about it. I think I saw it one week and then another week I said, if it's still there, I'll pick it up. And it was, so I paid the whopping 50 cents for it. So these are going into Tarnished Treasure's friend mailbox, which I need to get to her. It's a pack of Scribbler Crayons by Whitman. They have been used, of course, but I know she likes her Whitman stuff. And it was only a quarter. So I found a Stangle candlestick holder for 75 cents, and I'm just now noticing there's a slight chip right there. I have an ashtray that matches this. However, I want to try to find a match to this and sell it as like one console set. Oh, and there's a chip on this right here too. Darn it. Oh well, well I'm sure somebody's still going to want it. So I'm not going to sell this until I have a match to it. So 75 cents, I took the chance. It has marked Stangle on the bottom. Of course, when I sell it at the live, I will mention the defects because, again, it's vintage. It's not supposed to be perfect. So these were really interesting. They were 99 cents each. I'm not exactly sure if they're vintage or not, but something told me maybe they're from the 70s. It's these um, bookmarkers Oops. from Australia. One is in the shape of a boomerang, and the other one is in the shape of the continent of Australia. They had a $4 price tag on them originally from, I think, the place in Australia, so four Australian dollars. And then I got them for $0.99 cents each. I thought these would be a fun little jar item. They are made with um, opal, which I think is really cool. And then you've got, I think, like a kangaroo in there. And this one just has a bunch of sparkles and stuff in it. It's definitely something different and probably not something you see every day. At least I don't. So I thought those were neat and I think I'll be putting those in my junk jar. Now I haven't decided whether or not I'm keeping this next item. I might or I might put it in a live sale or I'll probably look it up on eBay just to make sure it's not worth a ton of money. I should have probably done that before I filmed this because I wasn't sure. It's a pink poodle, um, I think this is for your earrings. It's made by the Revere Manufacturing Company. I know that these were popular in the 1980s. I don't know if this one is from that era or not because the pink is very, very bright and vibrant. I will do a little research. If it is worth my time to be putting on eBay, you'll see it in my eBay shop hopefully by the time that this video uploads. It was 99 cents, by the way. I, as soon as I saw it with the figurines, I'm like, that has to come home with me. So I thought about my girl D over at Thrill of the Thrift. I don't know if you really consider this a large item or not, but I know that she likes her roosters. So I'm gonna clean this up before I send it to her. Sorry about that, I didn't want the camera to have to make you hear a loud noise. So I thought about my girl D over at the Thrill of the Thrift, and I'm thinking I'm going to send this off to her. I know she likes her roosters, and this will definitely fit in with her rooster theme in her kitchen. It was only $3.50. If I bubble wrap the heck out of this and put it in a box, I'm sure it'll make it safe to her location. So I got this from one of the charity thrift stores in town. Uh, they had it marked $2 because it is chipped. It's got a rubber stopper, but what's even cooler is it's got the milk glass and the zinc lid. And it's by Hazel Atlas. So I thought that was kind of cool. So it's got that minor little chip right there, but that nobody's going to see that. So I really thought that, that was cool. It says Mason's patented in November of 1858. I don't really think that that holds any value, at least not to me anyway. Oh, maybe I was wrong. <laughs> There's a big old chunk of glass missing out of this, and I'm just now seeing this after a few weeks, so I don't know what I'll be doing with that. 
I thought it was just the rim. I didn't even notice this because the tape was over it. I, w I didn't see that. Oh, well. Maybe I can redonate it or I don't know what I'll do with it. But, yeah, that was... Uh, I don't think these hold that much value anyway, so I don't know what I'll do with it. All right, and the last thing I'd like to share with you all is a vintage Scrabble game. You all know I like to pick these up, mainly just for the tiles and for the holders. I know that a lot of people like to craft with those. I got this for two bucks, and I have about two other ones that I need to combine all the tiles and the um, holders, because they do really well. Crafters like to use them. So anytime I can pick up a game cheap and I can take all the tiles and the holders out and lot them all into one big group, I can get some pretty decent money out of it. So I hope you all enjoyed this haul video, and I hope you guys like my new intro. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below, and I will see you all in my next video.